pandemonium. It's and we are just under a week away from the end of the draft. This NFL drafts in the history of the Buffalo Bills. I cannot state that enough. And you might be like, oh, that's an overreaction. And no, it's not. No, it's not. I'm going to give you the reasons why this draft is so important for McBean, the Bills, and everybody else. This draft, I cannot overstate it enough. Some may think I'm, it's, it's a hyperbole, but it's not. This draft is so important for the Buffalo Bills, and it's one reason and one reason only, and it's going to be the drafting of the quarterback. It's going to be huge, and whoever you like, we'll get into that in a little bit. Whoever it is, we're going to not go exactly into the players, but just how important it is to get your franchise QB. No doubt this draft is huge. Let's just look back at the Buffalo Bills history uh, when it comes to GMs and quarterbacks. There's a lot of bad ones, and there is a lot of, uh, and there's one good example of how a GM and quarterback duo uh, turned out to be good for the Buffalo Bills. So let's start obviously with the bad ones. And when a GM drafted a quarterback for the Buffalo Bills and how they ended up losing their job. Of course, the most recent example would be Doug Whaley. He went in all in all in on EJ Manuel. Now I know there are some people who say that wasn't exactly his pick, and you know all that other jazz. Well. I kind of disagree with that. Uh, he was the general manager, even though he had just started. But you got to understand uh, that that was his pick, and that was the one that rided with him the rest of his career and just never developed. The Bills did give him a little bit longer. Uh, but looking back on the Doug Whaley era, it will always be tied to EJ Manuel. GM will always be tied to their quarterback. Let's go back a little bit further. Tom Donahoe. Yeah, you probably haven't heard that name in a while. Drafting J.P. Lossman in the 2004 draft, obviously J.P. Lossman didn't turn out. Donahoe gone just two years later. How it didn't work out when the, the when the QB and uh, the, the GM who drafted the QB just didn't work out. It's m so important. And then, of course, the number one example that actually worked out, he actually didn't draft the guy, but he did get him to... Uh, to Buffalo would be Bill Polian. Uh, Jim Kelly was drafted to the Bills in 1983. Bill Polian comes along in 1986, but you have to remember that Jim Kelly wasn't a Buffalo Bill until 1986. Bill Polian gets him on the phone, gives him the biggest deal in NFL history to get Jim Kelly out of the USFL into Buffalo. The rest is history. Jim Kelly, Hall of Fame quarterback. Bill Polian has that nice uh, blazer tan blazer on right now as he's also in the hall of fame and uh, there's no way bill polian's probably there without jim kelly so you see it can affect the gm and their legacy and that's what brandon bean is about to encounter on whoever he picks whoever he picks i mean obviously find out in the future uh, but he will be tied to this quarterback for the rest of his time here in buffalo and usually if you pick quarterback are not going to be able to survive it long run so it's this draft is so important for the bill one of the most important drafts i i can remember in recent history uh, off the play right now it's going to be so important for them to get that franchise guy and just keep on moving forward in this process so let's go and look at the draft. So I told you a little bit about why this draft is so important. It is absolutely huge. Let's go into the dream draft scenarios. Now, before we get started in this, obviously we don't know who the Bills want, and whoever they end up picking on Thursday, they're going to come out and say, well, this is the player we wanted regardless of the situation. You're not going to find out till maybe three or four years later to, to know actually if the Bills, if that's who they wanted in the draft, they're going to tell you. So really, draft night, they'll be all smiles regardless of who they take. But let's go into the dream scenarios. And an, an, another thing, too, uh, a lot of this is up in the air because nobody knows what the Cleveland Browns are going to do, which is mind-boggling to me. Somebody explain to me why we don't know who the Cleveland Browns are going to select. Does somebody want to tell them that they have the first overall pick? Somebody? And that it doesn't matter 
if they come out and say who it is because they have a chance at every single player. They're putting up smoke screens to the entire NFL, and we can't figure out who the heck they're going to pick. It doesn't matter, Cleveland. You can tell us who you're going to pick because you have the first pick in the draft. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. And you would think after going 0-16, you saw what happened with Eli Manning in the 2004 draft. Maybe you would want to reach out to that person and be like, hey, you want to come to Cleveland? Are you sure you want to play here? Are you on board of taking over for this 0-16 team? Now, I know a lot of the quarterbacks have not – that, you know, they haven't come out and said they don't want to go to Cleveland. But don't you, wouldn't you want to just make sure if you were Cleveland, have a conversation with the person, be like, are you down for this? Because I'm down for this. And just make sure everything's good. But except it's the Cleveland Browns. They're putting up smoke screens when they have the number one pick in the draft. It makes absolutely no sense to me. And that's part of the reason why this draft is so unpredictable. Uh, remember when the Rams moved up? Remember when the Rams moved up? And, uh, you know, went after Jared Goff, we knew that. And we knew the Eagles were going to get Carson Wentz. Uh, we don't know that. And Kathy says, uh, unless they're trading up or trading out of the first pick, I just can't imagine the Browns doing that. And the main reason is if the Jets weren't sitting there at three, that's a possibility. But you really, as the Browns, you want to give the Jets the, the possibility of now having whoever they want at quarterback – uh, I just don't think it's realistic. Once the Jets moved up to number three, the Browns are sticking at the first overall pick because they need their quarterback. So I just don't think they're going to trade out. But, hey, it's the draft, and it's the Cleveland Browns. So who knows? Anything could be possible in this upcoming draft. I just don't think they're going to trade out of the first pit overall pick. If they do, that's going to be legendary. Possibly the Right now, uh, the dream scenarios. F of course, the first one that I think a lot of us want uh, that's probably not that realistic is to stay at number 12 and get your quarterback. Now, hear me out on this. There is a possibility that this takes place. The probably absolutely guaranteed selections of quarterbacks in this year's draft, number one, the Cleveland Browns. And, of course, this is if everything stays. Number one, the Cleveland Browns. And number three, the New York Jets. Those are your guaranteed two quarterbacks off the board. Giants, a question mark. I personally do not think they're going to go quarterback, but I have seen a lot of reports that people think that they are going to go quarterback. But after that, so if you get past the top three picks with two quarterbacks gone, it's uh, Browns at four, and I would be shocked if they picked a quarterback, but maybe they'll trade out. Who knows? But they're probably going to go with Barkley or Ed or Chubb, add another person to that team. They need all the help they can get there in Cleveland. Uh, five is the Broncos, which who knows? Elway says they want to trade out of the pick. Maybe he's just throwing up a smoke screen. Uh, but I, I personally don't think Denver's going with the quarterback. I think they're a year away. I think they want to give Paxton Lynch another shot there and work with what they got. Uh, I just don't think Denver is going quarterback uh, if they do indeed stay five. And then after that, if you get past the top five, if you're the Bills, nobody needs a quarterback after that. So it's six, the Colts, which another possibility to trade out. But if they were to stay, Colts have Andrew Luck. They're not picking a quarterback. Seven is Tampa Bay. They have Jameis Winston. They're not picking a quarterback. Eight is the Chicago Bears. They just got Mitch Trubisky last year. They're not picking a quarterback. Nine, the 49ers, Jimmy Garoppolo, they're not picking a quarterback. And 10, the Oakland Raiders, Derek Carr, they're not picking a quarterback. So if you can get out of the top five, it is almost somewhat realistic that the Bills could possibly stay at 12. Now, in front of them is the Miami Dolphins. Now, I know a lot of people have said that the Dolphins are for sure going quarterback. I'm skeptical of that. I don't understand really – exactly why the Dolphins would pick a quarterback. They do have Ryan Tannenhill, Tannenhill there. Uh, you know he's been coming off of injury, uh, but I feel like they want to give him one more shot. And, you know, when the when the Bills played against him, was he the greatest thing of all time? Uh, by no means. But I think he's deserving at least of another shot there in uh, in Miami. I put Miami as one who might be, would take a quarterback, a late-round quarterback, and throw a tester out there. I just, with their first overall pick, it's hard for me to see the Dolphins going quarterback. I know there's been a lot of reports and a lot of people think Miami is indeed going to go quarterback and even trade up for a quarterback. I just, 
I just don't – I don't think it's honestly that uh, – I don't understand the Dolphins picking quarterback that high in the NFL draft. That's just me, but it's obviously a possibility that Miami could go with a quarterback at the 11th pick. So then it leaves the Bills at 12th. And in that scenario, only two are gone off the board. And if that's who you like, if you're the Bills, uh, then you, you go and you make your quarterback selection. Uh, but I think it's definitely a possibility that they would try to get in front of the Dolphins and see what happens. So dream scenario number one, you pick your quarterback at 12. Maybe it's Josh Rosen falls to 12. You get him, and that's all she wrote. And then you have all the rest of the other picks to fill the many holes that are on this Bills team. Don't get it wrong. It was a playoff team in uh, 2017, but there's a lot of holes to fill on this Buffalo Bills roster. So that's dream scenario number one. If you're a Bills fan, stay at 12. Somebody falls to you, and you, we go home, and you get your next first-round pick and your two seconds and your two-thirds would be a dream scenario if you're a Bills fan. So the number two dream scenario uh, – in my opinion, is move up into four or five. So, uh, you know, I think to get up to that number two pick, you're going to have to give up the farm. Not to say you're not going to have to give up a lot to go up to number four or five, but if you get in there after seeing who the Jets select and your guys still, then go up and get them. Just, just do it. Now, how this becomes a success in a dream scenario for the Bills, I think if they don't have to give up either that 22nd or the 22nd uh, pick, in the draft, if they can keep that first-round pick, that'd be awesome, and maybe just give up the two twos to get up to either four or five. Uh, it seems like they'll probably have to give up a little more than that. But if the Bills move up to four or five and can keep either that first-round pick or one of the two seconds, that's a win. That is a win. Now, of course, it matters. Maybe they have to give up something in later years. Uh, but if the Bills don't have to give up that second first-round pick, and the two seconds to move up in the draft, you should consider it an automatic success. I, I, need, I mean, I know maybe maybe your quarterback that they select, maybe he's not your guy, but if they don't have to give up any of those, that's a big win for the Bills, and that's how I'm grading trades on draft day. So now after that, another dream scenario, of course, would be moving uh, up to that 6 or 10 range where it's those four, te- four or five teams who all have quarterbacks, which would be, Six, the Colts, five, the Buccaneers, eight, the Bears, nine, the 49ers, and 10, the Raiders, uh, and try to move in front of Miami and just go and get your guy. You probably have to give up less, but I'm always under, I, I like the idea of, hey, if your guy is there on the board and you like him, go up and draft him. So that's why I have kind of four or five before those six or 10 picks, because then it gets a little risky. Then you kind of let Arizona, who we haven't even talked about, get in the mix, mix who needs a quarterback as well. A lot of people have Lamar Jackson going there at 15. But you let other teams hang around like the Cardinals, who maybe could sneak up into that 6-10 through 10 position, or I've even seen the Patriots as a team that could possibly move up. Uh, I like with all the capital that we have, if you can move into that 4 or 5 position, go get your guy. I'm all on board with that. It's going to be an interesting night, and I can guarantee you one thing. Every mock draft that you see it happens every single year will not be right. There's trades that nobody can ever predict, and it's going to be a crazy one. You have to be there if you're a Bills fan. Uh, If you're going to be watching the entire draft, this is where you really got to pay attention. One through five, uh, you're going to be on pins and needles. Are the Bills going to move up? Who's going to be taken? It's going to be very nervous time. After the top five, you got to see see who's taken. Hopefully only two quarterbacks, so that leaves uh, the other three there for the Bills to select. And uh, after that, 6 through 10, you can take a little bit of a deep breath, but keep uh, an eye on the television uh, because the Bills could move up at any moment through 6 or 10 to get in front of Miami just to make sure that they can get their guy. But you got to remember the Bills hold the most draft capital out of anyone in this draft. They can move up. They they can do whatever they want, honestly, compared to other teams and – and stay, you know, and, and get up and do into whatever position they want. They hold all the cards. Now, do you want them to give up all those picks? That's a different story. But they do have the capital to really move up into any position, in my opinion. So uh, we got Cody coming in here. So what happens if we move up, give up all the picks, and the QB is a bust? This draft is deep at QB beyond the big five, and it absolutely is 
Cody. Uh, and that's the risk you got to be willing to take if you're the Bills. We've seen a lot of good things happen when we've seen a lot of good things happen with teams who've moved up in the draft lately and got their guys. Uh, it's a risk that you're going to be willing to take. Uh, yeah, obviously this draft is full of talent, and we'll get to that 1999 draft, which one was drafted was five QBs drafted, but the players who were not QBs drafted in the top ten all turned out to be great players, so we'll get to that in a little bit. But it's got to be a risk you're willing to take. You haven't had a franchise quarterback here since Jim Kelly. Uh, is it going to be the right move or not? I don't know. Is he going to be a bust right away? Who you know? Who knows? The thing with the draft, everybody gets very excited on draft night for what's going to happen, but you really don't know what a player is going to be about till two or three years after the draft. So you, you can get all excited about what's happening, um, but I, it's just a risk that you got to be willing to take. It's a risk that the Bills haven't taken. Let's just say it is in this drought, never have moved up to go get that franchise guy, and we see how that has turned out time and time again where it's just bad quarterback after bad quarterback after bad quarterback. Uh, I'm in the boat and in the opinion that let's do something that's unbills like Let's go out there and and get that guy, move up, and get your franchise quarterback. Of course, we don't know who uh, Brandon Bean likes and Sean McDermott. I guess we're just going to have to find out. And don't buy too much into their press conferences uh, on after draft day. Of course, they're going to say that they like the person, whoever they pick. And I'm sure they will obviously like them a little bit. It won't be a complete lie. But just hold off on your opinions. Take it for what it is and wait another year or two to really get to see the player play. And we'll see uh, what happens. So it's going to be a fun draft and one that's historical. Regardless of what happens, let's say the Bills do move up and go get their quarterback. This will be a draft, if he turns out great or terrible, that you're going to look back and go, well, the 2018 draft is either when this – process was really put into place or when it all went downhill this is going to be the draft that's what's happening on thursday night so if you're a bills fan you absolutely have to stay tuned and and watch this draft i'm so excited because it's literally the future of the bills happening in one night it's going to be good they're going to move up in my opinion just a matter of where not if we'll see what happens so i told you about the scary resemblance that this draft has to the 1999 draft. And there's no doubt uh, that it's going to play pretty much out the same way. So the 1999 draft, why it's relevant is there were five quarterbacks taken in the first round in that draft. And uh, this will, that was the last time that that's happened. And most likely on Thursday night, there's going to be five quarterbacks taken in the first round. So let's go through the quarterbacks that were taken and their careers that they ended up being. So number one overall, guess who had the number one overall pick in the 1999 draft? Um, it's not going to be shocking, but I'll give you a moment to think about it and, and take a wild guess at this one. But yes, of course, it would be the Cleveland Browns. So there's the resemblance number one. Had the first overall pick. They went with Tim Couch in that draft. And uh, for many of you, they may say, oh, I remember that name, or I don't know who that is exactly. Uh, ended up being a bust for the Browns. Uh, he was out of Kentucky. Uh, so that was the first pick, or first pick, first quarterback off the board. At number two, the Philadelphia Eagles selected Donovan McNabb. I think if if we, as Bills fans, if we could be guaranteed a career like Donovan McNabb had, we would take it in a heartbeat. Of course, we want a Super Bowl. Donovan McNabb didn't win a Super Bowl, but turned out to be a very good NFL quarterback, just that kind of that one tier under Hall of Famer, in my opinion, is where Donovan McNabb stands. And then uh, number three, that so there was three straight quarterbacks picked in that 1990, uh, 1999 draft. And I may even be saying his name wrong because uh, I don't even know who this guy is. But Achilles Smith uh, out of, from Cincinnati, I, I have no idea who he is, but obviously turned out to be a bust there in Cincinnati. So it was the first, the second, and the third pick all were quarterbacks in that draft. Uh, two of them ended up being a bust. One ended up being a great quarterback. So moving back in the draft, so how eerie, eerily similar this is, is you have one, two, three, where is a possibility for the 2018 draft, but then where the other quarterbacks were selected. Number 11, where the Miami Dolphins sit, Dante Culpepper was that selection 
Now, wasn't the greatest quarterback, but did have a pretty good career, especially their early for the Vikings was an exceptional quarterback uh, to start. Maybe didn't turn out to be exactly what the Vikings wanted, but overall, it was a pretty solid pick for the Vikings there at 11. And then at 12, the last and fifth quarterback selection would be Cade McCowan of the Chicago Bears, who I have no idea. Not Josh McCowan, Cade McCowan. Um, and so really out of the five, two ended up being halfway decent quarterbacks. Donovan McNabb, clearly the best one out of there. And Dante Culpepper, who pro that Vikings team was so good. They probably should have won a Super Bowl. They very much underachieved there in Minnesota. So two hit and three didn't. And that is definitely a possibility come this year's draft. When we look back, if you think all five picks are going to hit, you're out of your mind. But if you think all five are going to be busts, I also think you're out of, my, out of your mind. You can see that in the 1999 draft. But the other interesting part about this draft is let's look at the other players who weren't quarterbacks that were selected in the top 10. Get ready for this one because there's a lot of good names. And you can see when you don't aren't just so concentrated on a quarterback, what it can get back to you. So at number four in that year's draft to the Indianapolis Colts, Edwin James, uh, an absolute great uh, running back there in Indianapolis. The edge, of course, uh, went number four overall. At number five, Ricky Williams to the Saints. Of course, went on run, Ricky run. Had a great career uh, in New Orleans then, especially once he came to Miami. At number six, uh, I don't know. I'm not, uh, not a Hall of Famer, but probably should be, or maybe he is a Hall of Famer. I probably should have looked that up before. But Terry Holt to the St. Louis Rams at number six. And the names just keep on coming at you. At number seven, cornerback Champ Bailey, future Hall of Famer and great cornerback throughout his career. Uh, somebody else who's picking the 1999 draft. And then eighth overall, uh, David Boston as well, had a very good career in the NFL. So that's what you can get when you're not picking a quarterback in, in drafts like these. Uh, those were the players that, on the flip side, that teams were able to come away with when they didn't have to go after quarterback. Uh, clearly, the Bills are not in that position, and I'm not championing. You know, I'm not saying that they shouldn't go quarterback in this draft because they absolutely should. But it's just eerily similar how close the 1999 draft is to the 2018 draft. It's you're gonna you're gonna have five quarterbacks in this first round, and I think it's definitely a possibility that two hit. And three don't. And that's up to McBean to find the one that hits, not the ones that don't. So there's just no doubt about that. And the similar the similarities between uh, the drafts, you, can, you see it automatically. Uh, and so learn from history, Bills. Obviously, you got to do your homework and find the right guy. There's no doubt about it. So this is my uh, last pandemonium before the draft. I was all anti-draft for a little bit there. Uh, but obviously now open to it. So let's talk about who's going to be available and where the Bills should go and who they should draft. Uh, I know a lot of you are in the anti-Josh Allen camp. Well, so am I. Biggest thing that concerns me, accuracy. You can't teach accuracy to somebody. You can teach them everything else. I get this from Bruce Arians. This isn't off my the Joe Lorendi QB camp. Um, you can't teach accuracy. Either you have it or you don't. Josh Allen has a big arm. But he does, doesn't have the accuracy. Bruce Arians says you can't teach accuracy. Well, I'm going to believe him. He knows a lot more about football than I do. Josh Allen just doesn't have the accuracy, and I don't understand how he's going to be, uh, how people expect him to be a top quarterback in the NFL. It's great he can throw 75 yards, but think about it. How many times in the NFL do you have to sit back there and just throw the long ball? Obviously, it's important to have a big arm, uh, but. Very few times, actually, do you actually sit back there and just heave up long passes. And uh, I just don't see Josh Allen being a great quarterback in this NFL. So I'm hoping he goes number one to Cleveland. After that, we'll see what happens. I think a dream scenario, at least for me, Browns taking uh, Baker Mayfield. I'm sorry, the Jets taking Baker Mayfield at three. I know a lot of people like Baker Mayfield, and I actually like Baker Mayfield too. I don't know how great of a quarterback he's going to be in the NFL, uh, but if he could be, if those two quarterbacks could be off the board at one and three, I think it's a great scenario for the Bills because I think Josh Rosen and Sam Darnold are two of the top uh, quarterbacks in this draft. 
And it looked like Sam Darnold for a while there was going to go number one to Cleveland. Now all of a sudden that seems to be changing. I've seen a lot of mock drafts go with Josh Allen first overall. And why we don't know who the Cleveland Browns are picking at number one is still mind-boggling to me. Someone explain to me why the Browns haven't come out and said it. Do not understand. But if that happens, then the Bills, I think, would – I think Sam Darnold. They can go get Sam Darnold at maybe that fifth selection – or even at th- 6 through 10, go up and get him. If Sam Darnold's still on the board after 3, expect a lot of teams, even possibly Miami, Arizona, to try to go up and get him. And uh, I think that is would be an awesome win if the, if the Bills could get him at number 5 or in that top 10 at any point. Getting Sam Darnold, who a lot of people think is the best quarterback in this draft, maybe not the most NFL-ready, that goes to Josh Rosen, but one – that if you work with them a little bit, can turn out to be a great quarterback in this year's draft. I would be happy with that. Also, uh, I also like Josh Rosen. I I like NFL-ready type of quarterbacks, not big projects that who knows if they're going to work out or not. Uh, No offense to the Buffalo Bills, but not the greatest at developing quarterbacks. That has not been our strong suit, and I don't really want a project here in Buffalo uh, once again. Uh, Tyrod Taylor was considered a little bit of a project, turned out to be a pretty decent quarterback for us, uh, but not the one that you got to take the next step with. So that's why Rosen seems most appealing. So I think a big win for the Bills on draft night would be getting either Rosen or uh, or Darnold outside of that top three would be, would be fantastic. Honestly, it would be fantastic. And for all those of you who are in uh, Lamar Jackson, uh, field. I, I have no idea what he's going to be in this NF, NFL. Maybe, possibly somebody like Deshaun Watson. Uh, but if we learn one thing with Tyrod Taylor, with that with that dual threat quarterback, you got to be able to throw the football and have the strong arm. Not saying that Lamar Jackson doesn't, but you got to be a thrower first and a runner second. Tyrod was a little bit too much. They were too much equal for Tyrod. Uh, didn't really have that arm to back it up. Uh, Lamar Jackson shows that he had the big arm in college, but will it translate to the NFL? That's yet to be seen. I had these same same questions with Deshaun Watson, and it looks like he's going to be turned into a great NFL quarterback. So we'll see what happens. But the one thing that you got to know, this uh, I've said it early in the show, and I'll say it again because it's so important. This draft will be one that you look back on where you either say, we really messed up, and this is why we're here once again, in last place, or the 2018 draft is the reason we are in the playoffs contending for Super Bowls. That's how important this draft is, and it comes down to one thing, the quarterback position. That's it. Are you going to get your franchise guy, or are you not? And this is going to be the draft that you look back, especially for Brandon Bean, and say, what did you do for us? Did you get us the right guy to move forward in the future with? Uh, I hope it's finally the time here in Buffalo where we go and get that franchise QB. It's so important and sets you up for years and years to come. So we'll see what happens when we come back or next week on Fandemonium. We'll have a new quarterback here in Buffalo. Who is it going to be? I don't know. Where are they going to pick him? I don't know. Nobody knows. Mel Kuyper doesn't know. Todd McShay doesn't know. Yeah, you could go look in those mock drafts and say, oh, this and that. Go look at go look at a Mel Kuyper mock draft right before before a draft, and then go look at what actually happened. They're usually not even close. They're so unpredictable. It's literally like a March Madness bracket is trying to predict the NFL draft. You just never know what's going to happen moving forward. So make sure you tune in, and then I'll be back next Saturday giving all my thoughts on what happened. If I had to put money on it, I'm going to say it right now so it's out there on the Internet. I think the Bills move up to that number five position where Denver is and select their quarterback. Who that is, I don't know. I'll go out. I'll go on a limb and say it's it's Josh Rosen. So my prediction, if I had to put money on it, Bills trade up to that number five pick to Denver, and they get their quarterback. What they give up, probably this 22nd pick, and the two in the two second round picks, uh, I would be happy with that. But if it's even less that they have to give up, I'll be happy with that too. So that is my prediction for the draft. Bills move up to five and get Josh Rosen. Probably look back on this one and just hysterically laugh at how wrong I was. 
but we'll see what happens. But now I'm on the record for it. So let's tune in. It's going to be fun. And we're going to, this is the start of something new here in Buffalo. Thank you for tuning in today. I'm Joe Lorendi, and this was Fandemonium for Buffalo Fanatics.